Let's start by looking into the AI coding tools landscape. On the bottom left, we have the traditional hand coding kind of IDEs. We have JetBeans, VS Code, and PyCharm, which are pretty much uh, editor first user experience. And on the top left, we have this terminal, terminator, and putty, which is pretty much terminal first experience. And you can run all sorts of your bash commands or shell scripts in these tools, but they are not intelligent at all. If you want more intelligence, then on my right, we have cursor and winsurf, which are pretty much IDEs, but they are intelligent IDEs and they are more of redefining how these IDEs actually work by leveraging AI. But as developers, we are more inclined towards sticking with terminals. We love our terminals. At the same time, we want to do much more AI stuff. One of the well-known tools in this quadrant is that of Cloud Code. But the problem with Cloud Code is that it has got its own provider, which is Anthropic. And so we need to stick with Anthropic only models, which is Cloud's family of models. But if you want to use, say, OpenAI models or DeepSeq models or even Gemini models, then I was looking for a tool which can actually help me do that. And when I was looking for something like that, I came across Warp. So in this video, let's look into Warp and we'll go ahead and build an end-to-end -end application using just Warp. And we will see how seamlessly we can develop an end-to-end -end application using just Warp alone without using any other tools. So let's jump straight in. So what we're going to do today is do a coding project with Warp. We are going to build an image processing app and in that, we are going to have the ability to upload images, preview the uploaded image, and then process them. Say, we should be able to blur the image. We should be able to convert it to black and white and do some sort of simple image processing. And eventually, we should be able to download the processed image. So let's go ahead and build this app now. So to get started, all that we have to do is visit warp.dev. And we can see here that there is download for Mac. And we also have brew install warp. So if you want to run the command, you can do brew install warp and warp should straight away install for you and it should be available in the applications. So once we open warp, it's going to ask us to either sign up or sign in. So I'm going to sign in because I've already signed up with them. So if I click on sign in, it has automatically logged in. And if I click on take me to warp, it's going to open the warp app and it's going to give us these options. So we can either code, we can deploy, or we can do something else. I'm going to click on code so that we can straight away go to the coding mode. I first change to the directory where I want to build this app. And I'm going to start the conversation by saying create a React app for uploading and processing images. The UI should have. And if I click on Alt Enter, I should be able to give a list of things. For example, a file upload component. I haven't even typed anything. It started suggesting things. So if I click on Alt Enter again, and it's going to suggest me more. A progress bar to show uploaded status. So I'm going to tap into that. A display area to upload image. I'm fine with that. A button to trigger image processing. Because it's too generic, I'm going to edit that and say a button to blur the uploaded image, a button to download the blurred image, and I'm going to give further details. And I'm going to say the blurred image result should only be displayed after the blur button is clicked. Just to be a bit more specific about the text stack, I'm going to say the project should use the following technologies, and I'm going to give the details. Just to add to that, I'm going to say the project should be responsive and have a good user experience. Let's start the conversation and see where it leads us. So it started thinking. Let me start by creating a new React project and setting up the required structure. OK, if I run this command and read the output, it's asking to create React app, image processor, template, TypeScript. I'm going to click on run. So I've given it permission to run the command. So it's going to create the React app now. So while that is running, it shows this button which says auto approve all agent actions for this task. So if I click on that, everything that we do for this task is going to be auto approved. So again, it's asking, OK, if I run this command and read the output and it says CD image processor and it's going to install these ones. 
I'm just going to say run and now it started making all the code changes on its own and now it says now let's start the development server to test the application and it says and when it says npm start it says file to compile so I'm going to ask it to fix the error and it has corrected itself and says we need to install the correct post CSS plugin for Tailwind CSS let me install the required package and it's going ahead and installing it so it did have a couple of errors while it was trying to start the app but it has fixed everything on its own as we can see and eventually it says compile successfully and it's done npm start and if we go to the user interface the link that it is provided to the local host click on that we can see that image blur process not the best of names but we can see that the app is created here we can drag and drop our image here so that's what I'm going to do so we have a initial one page app which is running fine locally um, moment of truth I'm now going to go ahead and test this so I'm just going to drag and drop an image so I've got this image of a cake I'm just going to drag it and drop it in here we just saw the progress bar there and we've got the preview of the uploaded image and there's an apply blur button if I click on that wow we can see the blurred image and it also has the download blurred but the image button enabled so if I click on that we got the blurred image downloaded and that looks fine to me and let's test out this button which is upload new image it is taking us back to where we started but one of the things that we can note here is that even after we upload the image we can see this drag your image here option so we don't want this one to be there let's go ahead and ask it to remove this in our conversation let me go back to warp and i'm going to say after i upload the image the file upload is not disappearing i want it to disappear whenever i upload an image hopefully that's the code changes for us and it says i'll modify the code to hide the file upload area after an image is uploaded so it's taking care of that it's updating the app.txt file to conditionally show the uploaded area only when no image is uploaded so it has done the change now if i click on that it shows the code change that it has done so it's going to show this div only when the original image is not present that makes a lot of sense and it also gives explanation as to the code change that it has done i'll minimize that and i will ask it to restart the app for testing it should hopefully run the npm start command will help you restart the app for testing and so it says it's going to run npm start which makes sense i'm just going to click on run and we have the app back up again i'm going to do the same exercise i'm going to drag and drop click on blur and we can see that the code change is successful we don't have that div where it actually shows the upload after the image is uploaded so it has fixed that now as the next step i would like to control the level of blur here so it'll be nice to have some form of a control here to actually control the level of blur in the output image so that's exactly what i'm going to give in the conversation i'm going to control c and come out of it and now i'm going to say i want to control the level of blur in the output image provide a slider to adjust the blur so if i hit enter on that says i'll help you add a blur control slider to your image processor so it has done some changes in order to change the blur intensity which looks like a reasonable change so i'm going to click on apply changes and it has also summarized the changes that it has made i'm going to ask it to start the app to test run it so there you go let's try it out again it's uploading it and we can now see a slider where we can control the level of blur that we want for example i'm just going to say one pixel blur if i click on that we can see that the blur is very less and if i really slide it to the right and then click on apply blur we can see the image is really blurred indicating that the slider is also working for us if i click on upload new image it's taking us back to the home page it's all working fine but however it's not looking too professional it looks like a school project what will be nice is if there's more of a logo on the top left and if it's a login logout button on the top right and also if these controls are on the top of this display then it'll look much more professional is what i feel so let's go ahead and get that change done in order to achieve that what i've done is i've quickly pulled together this user interface this is what the ui should look like nothing sophisticated like in figma or anything is just a basic paint tool i've just drawn this few rectangles 
rectangles and I've written inside what I want. I want the logo on the top left and I want the uh, sign up and login buttons on the top right and I want the control buttons on the top of the display of the images. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screenshot of this and I'm going to give this as input to what. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to say fix the UI with the following changes and I'm going to list all the changes that I want. I want a logo on the on the header. Create a logo with the letters IB for image blur app. There should be sign up and login buttons on the header. The controls should be on top of the image previews and i'm now going to say use the attached image as a reference for the ui layout and i'm going to attach the image that we just took the screenshot of so we've got the screenshot here i'm just going to give that as an attachment and i'm just going to hit enter so it started working on that now i'll help you fix the ui for the requested changes so it's exploring the current project structure to understand the existing code base it's done that now i will check the css file to understand the styling so it's checking the css and based on the reference image and the current code it's saying that it's going to change this div i'm going to say apply changes and now it says i need to update the layout to match the reference image more closely the controls should be positioned about the the image previews and the overall layout should match the wireframe let me make those adjustments and it's working on loading the diff for the changes that it's going to do so it is making these changes we can see those and i'm going to apply changes so it's reordering the layout to match the reference with controls about image and i'm going to apply those changes too for the dark theme so we won't be surprised if we if we look at the ui and it looks a bit dark and it's updating the progress bar to match the dark theme too i'm going to approve of that finally it has done changes to some logo styling and button hover effects so it's done some changes to image image containers too and i'm going to apply those changes now it's saying let's test the application to make sure everything works correctly okay to run npm start so there you go it has changed everything to a dark theme which I did approve of, otherwise it would not have gone ahead and changed that. And it has created a tiny logo on the top left that says IB. And on the top right, we have sign up and login. So I'm going to obviously upload image and test this out. So the upload of image seems to work fine. And we have the controls on the top right, which is upload, blur and download. I'm going to click on blur and the blur has taken place fine. And we are also able to download the blurred image. And one thing we can notice is that the control for the blur has disappeared probably because we missed that out in the layout so we did not give a control here for the blur and it has exactly done that it has removed the blur control otherwise it would have retained that so what has happened is it really stuck to this design to the dot it has even changed the theme to a dark one and it has removed the upload new image and also the blur controls so i'm going to ask it to revert back and include those but this time i'm going to use voice input so let's go ahead and do that so if we come down here we can see that there's voice input if i click on that we should be able to talk to warp so let's go ahead and do that if I click on that the button to upload new image is disabled and i'm also not able to control the level of blur so include those in the changes and i'm going to top it so it has perfectly translated what we said i'm just going to hit on enter let's see if it reverts back and brings back those button and the blur control so it clearly says that the blur intensity state variable is there but there's no ui slider but we do want that back and upload button is always enabled the upload button on line 201 to 206 doesn't have says it should be working there might be an issue with the file input reference it didn't get that right but let's see what it does i'm going to click on apply changes so it's modifying the css style for the range slider to make it look better i'm going to allow this change because it's to do with the user interface i'm going to say start the app and there we have it if i just upload the cake again and now we can see that i'm able to change the blur intensity and if i click on apply blur i'm able to blur differently and i'm also able to download the image so that all is working fine but we can keep going on and on for example we can make these buttons work we can give the command to have a sign up form and also a login page but i'm going to stop here in terms of development but i wanted to quickly show you some other feature that's available 
available which is super cool that's the warp drive for example if we click here it opens up warp drive you can have shared commands between your team as an individual you can also have mcp server rules and also there are a few things for example if you click on this plus you can have prompt and you can save your own prompts for example this prompt to create a react app was a bit verbose and if i want to save that i would just have to you know just add a title here create app and in the description i would say prompt to create a react app and i'm going to paste my prompt here and if i click on create then that's going to save the prompt as one of my prompts in my personal directory so you can see that the prompt is saved here so whenever i want to create any app with react i just have to click that i will get that in the conversation and i can just close this and i can straight away use this prompt so that's one of the nice features we can keep adding more and more to our workflows and we can also share the prompt that we just created for example if i click on share create app we can enter emails or people in your organization or even outside of your organization and you can click on invite they will be able to see this prompt and go ahead and use it you also have the ability to click on copy link and you can share the link straight away for others to use that prompt so that was what guys you can start with the task you can delegate to ai and you can solve your problems all by saving tons of time in your day-to-day -day work i hope that video was useful and please do try it out with the link in the description below and i will see you in my next video until then take care